Hi everybody and welcome back to another video and if you're here for the very first time it's an absolute pleasure to meet you. I'm Jane and my husband Mike is behind the camera. We're British early retirees, we've got no debt, we've paid off the mortgage and we live a thrifty, frugal and money-saving life here in Brittany in northwest France. And every Sunday we bring you something personal to us, some of the things that we are doing to save money. Now this Sunday we're going to look at those five easy, quite painless really, frugal tweaks. Because in 2024, things are not getting any easier, are they? We might be doubling down on our frugality, we might be, you know, nailing this frugality. But sometimes you just need to find a little bit more in your savings, just to put a bit more aside. So this Sunday, that's what the video is all about and we hope you enjoy it. So what is a perpetual clothing or perpetual household budget, I hear you asking? And this is something that members of my family all seem to do and we do too. It's when you have items that you buy and then when you've finished with them. Let's take, for example, an Instant Pot. You've had an Instant Pot for a couple of years, you've used it, you're not really into it anymore, but you don't want to just give it away, so you sell it. And you might sell it for a certain amount of money and then you take that money and you buy something secondhand that somebody else is giving away or they don't want anymore. And you might take the money that you've got from the Instant Pot and you might buy an air fryer with it or you might buy a bread machine. And that's what I mean by perpetual budgets for either clothing. I've got family members that do this with clothing or they do it with items for children. So the children grow out of something, they sell that and then they buy the next toy or items of clothing that the children need and the money just gets circulated and it gets circulated in the local community as well. It could be gardening equipment, I could sell my lawnmower because I've I don't want this lawnmower anymore. I'm looking for a self-propelled lawnmower. So I might sell my lawnmower and might get you know, 50 euros for it. Somebody else might be selling a lawnmower and I might put that 50 euros towards another lawnmower. So that's what we mean by having a perpetual clothing or household budget and you keep that money in circulation. It's kind of no new money, either in your circulation or in anybody else's, and it just saves you money. So buying and selling secondhand and the money just keeps on revolving. The next one are dupes, and I've always loved a dupe. Let's talk about the dupes that save us money. Do you shop in Lidl? Do you shop in Aldi? Do you buy a cereal? Do you buy a kind of confectionery? Do you buy sort of a meat product? Do you buy a pizza product or anything like that and get it home and think, well, that tastes exactly the same as the expensive one I used to buy. Have you bought a beauty product or a fragrance? Or you've seen it on somebody, you smelled somebody's perfume and said, is that? And they'll say, no, I got this in Lidl or I got this in Zara. Zara's fragrances are amazing. They cost about 15 euros and they smell exactly the same as very similar products that could smell 100 euros or 150 euros. The other dupes that we all love. Do you have a favorite takeaway? Do you have a favorite coffee shop? Do you have a favorite baked good from goods or good from a coffee shop that you absolutely love? Go and look for the dupes of that. All you do is you open Google and you'll put in there a brand of anything that you love in particular. Maybe it's a pizza, maybe it's a cereal, maybe it's a brand of cheese, any of that. I'm putting that in supermarket dupe, especially with a food product, put in supermarket dupe. When you're looking for clothing items, and I know this because I get the Libby app and I'll read magazines in there and they will often compare a branded item of clothing, quite expensive, from a well-known brand. And then they will look at the discount supermarkets or the discount clothing brands who will have something and you can't tell 
the difference. So if you want to save money, go for the dupes. And here's another example. People in blind testing on food or blind testing on beauty products, they more often than not can never tell the difference. When it comes to searching for items for your home, whether those are household items, whether those are clothing or beauty products, you may be like us and you might live many miles away from any kind of cities where you will have any real choice. We're a good hour from, we are more than an hour from Rennes, we are an hour from Brest, we are an hour from Camper, and sometimes my time is more valuable than money saving. So I do a lot of my searching online for goods before I go, or I'm gonna buy them online. And something that we've always done, and we've done this for years and years and years, is whenever we search, we pause. When I say pause, I might mean pause for five hours or 24 hours, and then go back and search again, because the algorithm will bring you up similar products or the same products from different retailers that you couldn't find on your first search. So that's what we mean by pause, and search again. So when you found things at the price you want to pay, then, once again, open another window with Google, and this time, when you have found the store that you want, when you have found the brand of, let's say, fridge freezer, air fryer, the brand of Instant Pot or slow cooker, anything that you want, then put that brand in there, and then put in the words after that, discount code and then see if you can find something because when you go to pay you'll find at the end of it do you have any voucher codes do you have any voucher codes so you're looking for discount codes or in particular the words voucher codes every single time we will get some kind of discount i don't care if it's five percent i don't care if it's ten percent i don't care if it's a cash back i don't care if they send me a gift voucher to spend another time I don't want to, and I know you don't want to, pay full price for anything. So that's what I mean by pause and search again. Let's talk house clearance now. Often when people are relocating, they've moved to another house, they're moving elsewhere, they might be leaving the country, they might be leaving an area and going far, far away. They might be going to a smaller house, they might be moving into an apartment, they might be moving into sheltered accommodation, any of those things. They might be moving into military accommodation, that was something we often experienced when we lived in Plymouth. So they might be moving out of area and people will not be able to take everything they've got with them and it is a good opportunity for them to have a really good clear out and they will start selling items individually on Marketplace or on Vinted. And this is something that we do that we want to share with you. When we go to collect, you can get the feeling sometimes, often if you've traveled a distance, that they, they could be chatty, they could be open, they could be friendly. And sometimes you can travel all the way, they'll open the door or through the crack of the door, they'll pass you what they sold, they'll hold their hand out for the money and shut the door. This is not the time to do this. But if they are open, and if you've traveled a distance, you've traveled, you know, an hour, and they'll let you lose, use the loo, or they will give you a cup of tea or something like that, and you can get talking with them. We've often bought other things equally cheaply, and before they've put them online to sell them to someone else. Here's an example. Somebody was completely downsizing. They had an entire craft room full of fabric. I went and bought some fabric. We traveled a distance. We asked if we borrowed the loop, normal thing. Uh, you know, if you a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. And we then got chatting about what else are they selling? So we went for fabric and we came back with a pressure washer as well. Bargain price. We've been for garden furniture and we've asked if anything else. And they said, well, we've got some spades and forks and trowels and things we don't really want to bother putting them on there do you want to give us you know 20 euros for the lot and we're like, yeah yes please we've also been to places where 
they've been giving away plants, for example, and we've got there and got chatting and they said, look, we've got a load of this, you know, you said you're looking for bamboo. We've got a load of bamboo, but you'll have to dig it up yourself. Is that okay? So if you're going to a house clearance and you can sense it, can't you? You can sense if they're, they're okay with you. And if you get that feeling, don't be afraid to say, are you, are you sending anything else? Because, you know, we're always, we're always looking for things for our, our house or for our garden and see what they have to say. You never know the bargains that you could get before they advertise them to anyone else. <music> Gifts from a giveaway, what on earth do I mean by that? Let me explain to you. We often have things that we need to give away. Um, when we had our barn rebuilt and demolished, there was lots and lots of sheets of wavy metal, corrugated roofing. We needed to get rid of that. And it wasn't the best condition, we couldn't sell it, but people might buy it and, uh, you know, put it on a woodshed, that kind of thing. And what we found is when we were giving things away, the people were quite reluctant to come and get them for nothing. It was like they were a bit embarrassed. But if we said to people, um, we've, this is something we're giving away, maybe a bottle of wine, brackets, but not necessary, you could if you want to, or a box of chocolates, or a box of nice biscuits, or maybe you've got some garden produce, or maybe you've got some plants that you've grown on, or you've potted on yourselves, something like that would be nice. So our land, we had a, it used to be a quarry years ago, and we had a lot of good cut stone, but yay big people build, used for wall building. And it was, a, it was a bit a nuisance for us to pile it up or put it places, but we've offered it to people. When we had our small secondhand uh, wood burning cooker in here, that we knew, you know, somebody else might want to, you might put it in a, an outbuilding, they might put it in a workshop, it will ill heat them, and we gave it away. And what, we've end, what we end up with when we give these things away is there's always boxes of chocolates in our cupboard or a box of chocolate biscuits or a few bottles of wine. One occasion somebody brought us, we asked them, could you bring us a bottle of port? And because they thought there was rather more than they thought they were getting for free, they came back with another bottle of port. So it means there's always kind of goodies or treats in our cupboards, but we use these for gifts. It's not mean, it's not tight-fisted. People, when you give them a gift, they really don't mind that you got it for free. They don't mind that you've been given a gift and you are re-gifting it, that you turn up at the house and you give them a bottle of red wine or you give them a bottle of rosé or you give them a box of chocolates. So it's like the, it's a perpetual gift system. So if you've got stuff to give away, be okay to say to people, how about, you know, you can bring me a box of chocolates. I don't want money for it, but you can bring me maybe a box of biscuits. So there you go. You're giving things away. It's perfectly okay to ask for something tiny in exchange. A bottle of wine here is three euros, remember? A small box of chocolates, three to five euros. It's not expensive. And then it's okay to have those and give them as a gift, as a hostess gift, we'd often call that, when you've gone to someone's house, maybe for lunch or maybe for coffee. To hand this over to you now for you to share with everyone all the viewers because they love to read your comments too those little tweaks that you're making in 2024 that's stretching your budget just a little bit further because we read every one of your comments thank you massively to everyone who hits the like button thank you massively to all subscribers old and new we know half of you watching are not subscribers so go on hit that subscribe button it costs you nothing and don't forget to hit that little notification bell as well so you never miss our videos thanks again everyone we'll see you soon bye for now